What's up, money? Hey, man. Business is tough. Now, I ain't a cold person. I, I mean, I am cold, but motherfucker. What are you talking about? You want a drink? Uh, man, have a seat, man. All right. Now, I got into this dope gang because it was the only thing that was open to me, man. The only thing, man. Hey, I am not judging. No, listen. Now, I paid my dues. Now, I learned in a hard school, man. And I changed stuff. You know me. I do this stuff so I got a chance to do some good in this town. So you say. So I say. So I do. When I get the money, man, I will build parks. I will sponsor kids. I will save lives. But I got to have the money, man. Is all this? All this, it means nothing if you ain't got the heart, Nico. Amen, brother. <laughs> Playboy X is a man who came from humble beginnings. A once bright kid with a bright future. But ambitious to a fault. He was a good kid back in the day. Always hungry, though. Always wanted more. And finally getting that rise to power just steadily amplified that. In a bad way. Now that he's a big shot drug dealer, to him money is everything. Like it's literally his favorite word. What's up, money? Hey, what's up, money? What's up, money? Yo, money! Follow me! Follow the money! Yo, money! We going down through this sucker! Here we be, money. I thought you was money! Another motherfucker gone and let the money go to his head. Do the money, son. Money talks. Money say jump. Cats say how high. But people? They're just his puppets, nothing more. Even the people who've helped him to get where he is now. So how this one sweet kid became such a money hungry tyrant who aspires so much to become the next Jesus Christ is what we're going to learn in today's GTA origin story. Playboy X's birth name is Trey Stewart, and he was born in North Holland, 1983. Trey was a very book smart kid, who became strong friends with the neighborhood's once powerful drug lord, Dwayne Forge, at the age of either 8 or 9. Although he may have been book smart, a book smart kid doesn't make a street smart kid, leaving Dwayne to teach him the ways of the streets, and over time, came to see him as a son. Eventually, Dwayne gets arrested, leaving Trey to take over his business as the new head. He started off as small time, not just in dealing, but stealing. But when he took over the cocaine empire, he went all out. It wasn't just about drugs anymore. He also expanded to other domains, even legitimate businesses. He eventually got involved with Elizabetta Torres and started monitoring drug deals all over the city, now known by his street name, Playboy X. Playboy made it big, no doubt, but at the cost of his own humility. As the empire grew, so did his ego. It's also apparent that his book smarts have deteriorated as well. Shit, Yusef is from Dubai. He's an African, and he's coming to Liberty City to make it big. It's my duty to watch this cat's back. My ancestors came from Africa. Now he's coming out a bit later. Me and him could be cousin shit. I think you might want to look at the map, Playboy. Dubai isn't in Africa. Shit, it all the same. Africa, America, Dubai. The thing is, you know, Jesus, he did some crazy shit too. I mean, everyone does. He killed people. He killed that John the Baptist cat. He did what he had to. I don't think you're correct about that. In 2004, he started disregarding Dwayne. Not just his old-fashioned views of drug dealing, but he also stopped staying in touch with Dwayne while he was still in prison. Playboy first meets Nico Bellic at Elizabetta's house party where he's tasked with accompanying Playboy to meeting up with Johnny Klebitz to do a heroin deal, which turns out to be a sting operation. After that, 
Playboy begins employing Nico, and during their next meeting, he claims that he wants to quit dealing drugs altogether and actually do something positive that makes a difference, such as donating to poor schools and the young black community, even wanting to become a legitimate real estate developer. And to do that, he desperately seeks the approval of Yusuf Amir, who ain't studding him. So to get his attention, he gets Nico to infiltrate a construction site once owned by Yusuf, but taken over by a union strike due to having friction with the Messina family. Around this time, Dwayne finally gets out of prison and quickly disapproves of who Playboy has become, but we'll get back to him later. Despite Playboy's best efforts, however, it ultimately does nothing in his favor because after Nico kills all of the Union goons, Yusuf not only shuts down the site entirely, but shows way more acknowledgement to those who were killed than he does Playboy. Next, Playboy gets Nico to kill Marlon Bridges, another drug dealer whom he suspects of being a snitch, but not before having Nico take a picture of him first to confirm what he looks like, all because Playboy is bad at giving descriptions. So going back to Dwayne, after his release, Playboy, who is still in charge of the North Holland Hustlers, starts doing everything within his power to avoid his former mentor. This leaves Dwayne in a very bitter and nihilistic state, and after getting to know him a little more, Nico, because he starts to sympathize and relate to Dwayne, offers to unconditionally help him reclaim some of his power by helping him to reclaim his old base of operation, the Triangle Strip Club in Northern Gardens, since taken over by the Tronches brothers, associates of Playboy. Playboy is having none of this, and after realizing that his and Dwayne's relationship is set to blow, he calls up Nico for a private conversation at his penthouse. Even though he claims to have given Dwayne half of his business, Playboy now sees him as a liability aiming to take back leadership, and feels that the best way to prevent that is by killing off Dwayne. But Playboy can't bring himself to kill his own father figure, so he pays Nico to do it. Eventually, Dwayne contacts Nico asking to kill Playboy after suspecting Playboy of wanting to kill him, leaving Nico and the player to then decide which man should be dealt with. So, if the player chooses to kill Dwayne, Playboy will give Nico his pay, but this just turns him into an even bigger asshole. I put Dwayne out of his misery. You did what you had to do, Nico. You got yourself that money. Good for you. You want me to come around? You took down Dwayne, Nico. I see your face. I see the cat that killed my mentor. Dwayne was like a father to me. I can't be around you no more. It's over between us. Now, I don't want no beef, but now you and me got some. So it's best if we just stay the hell away from each other, man. Shit. You nothing but a cold-hearted killer, man. I mean, where's the love? Where's your heart, homie? Man, you ain't cool. You try to find something to live for, man. Peace. But if the player chooses to kill Playboy, Nico will just confront him back at his penthouse. And Playboy, being the alpha male that he is, just runs out like a little bitch leaving his thugs to be killed by Nico. After that, Nico manages to chase and corner him into an alley and fatally shoots him in the neck, but not before giving him these parting words. I took this shit to the next level. Cats like you just can't accept that. You didn't change the game. The game changed you. Nico is then rewarded by Dwayne with Playboy's penthouse. And that's the history of Playboy X. If you like this video, leave a comment telling me your thoughts. 